Many of us use maps daily to get between two places. For instance, if I need to get from London to Dover, I can plug in London and Dover into a map app and I'm on my way. As I travel, notice how the top of the map moves with me. The direction I'm moving is at the top of the map, not north. But maps have not always been the go-to tool for wayfinding. In medieval and early modern Europe, for instance, the text itinerary was a more common tool for getting directions. And when maps started to become a tool for thinking about how to get between two places, they didn't look like you might expect. Let's look at a spread from a 1675 guide to Britain's roads. These two pages show how to get from London to Dover in 1675. The illusion of curling paper helps teach you how to read this map. Look at it as if it were one unrolling piece of paper showing a continuous route. Like my iPhone, up is the direction I'm heading, not always north. Unlike the iPhone, this book is not very portable. It weighs about five pounds and can't fit in my pocket. So what about some other maps? This 1990 road map of London looks more traditional in its orientation. Its small, rectangular shape makes it ideal for many kinds of pockets. And it easily folds and unfolds. Unlike the 1675 book, this map was designed to move with the traveler. These details about how a map was made to be used aren't always apparent just by looking at the front. Only when we look at the back of this 1868 map of London is it obvious that it too was made to fold into bags or pockets. From the size and shape of books, we can also infer class markers of objects. If someone were hunting on the windy moors, they might take a book like this, an 1840 guide to hunting in the Brams Hill Hunt. <coughs> An enterprising researcher might try to connect the book's size and shape to pockets in clothing in this part of the 19th century. These inferences are necessary because, just as you don't keep a meticulous diary of how you use the map on your phone every day, map users of the past did not usually do us the favor of chronicling their daily use of maps. In the place of these sources, we can only look at internal evidence, the size, shape, wear, and other physical qualities of the maps in front of us. <laughs>